tried to pull out as much as possible. It was uh, it was rough, let's just say that. And it smells were terrible. What I got out of this cow, Jackie, you tired? I got my champion of a rod and reel here. Thanks, Brooks. So I'm not sure if there's any fish in this pond since it went completely dry last year, but. What are you doing? Fishing. Fishing? You don't have a pole. Yeah. How can you be fishing? fishing I'm playing fishing clash. What are you doing? Let me see that. Let me see that. Got him. Oh, a stingray. Claim that. Look at that, dude. That's not something you're gonna catch in this pond. Let me get some new gear. Stay in there. Got him. Grouper. Love some grouper. Claim it. Since I won't be catching any fish out of this pond, I get to travel around the world and go to all these awesome places and catch some unique fish. You gotta have good equipment to catch some of these awesome fish. Every time you catch fish, you're gaining more power to get more upgrades on your equipment. Also with clans, you can fish against your best friends, even in your family members. Little perch, look at that. A Saginaw bluegill. The graphics on this game is insane. One of my favorite things about this game is there's so many places you get to go fish and there's so many different types of species of fish. The rarer the fish, the tougher it is. All right guys, you can help support us. Go download Fishing Clash and you can get a $20 value reward. Use our special gift code, Bison, on your first game. With my gift code, you'll get a unique avatar, one mythical lure card, 50 luck power up, and 30 weight power ups to help you catch bigger fish. Using a link in our description or the QR code, you can go download the game, and don't forget to use the special gift code, Bison. We gotta get back to work.
baby. They're not scared. Thor. Thor. Hey, buddy. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Thor. Smiling. You smiling? <laughs> All right, guys, we are, uh, we're back at uh, Mom and Kevin's, the original place here, and uh, here is our uh, Texas cow. Um, what a day yesterday. Um, what a uh, first time thing to do uh, for bison. I had to uh, cut it off because, um, as you guys could tell, I was struggling to, uh, to do what I was trying to do. And so uh, just to do a little recap here on what I was doing, this mama has a great story. Um, she came in with the Texas group. I bought, I don't know, about 16 animals in, in 2021 when we had got the Ponderosa and brought them in there. And basically this herd was kind of malnutritioned and needed a, needed a, a lot of attention basically. And uh, this mama here is a very good example. They were thin and and i think they even had calves on them at that time and when we brought them in we wormed them and got them on some feed and good grass and got them going and uh they've made a huge stride huge strides and have gained like this is one of the biggest cows she was one of the biggest cows up to this point she was weighing between 11 and 1200 pounds uh, that's how awesome she looked but they've had a lot of recovery time over the past two years. Then she got pregnant from Big Joe. She's been in the Big Joe herd. And then I noticed something sticking out of her one day. And it looked like it was pre-birth, possibly. It was like a day. And I was like, okay, well, she's getting ready to calf maybe. And then she had the same stuff the next day. And I'm like, here we go again. We have another issue then I called Doc at that point, and I'm wondering what's going on. The next day, she's got a hoof sticking out of her, and it was discolored, and it was flopping, essentially, on her. It just was not a good sight. First time I've ever seen this. From there, uh, that's when Marissa and I um, made a move, and what we did was is we... Uh, I called Doc again. I said, Doc, she's got a hoof 
sticking out of her. And he said, he said, you need to take care of her ASAP. And so that's when we brought her over here to mom and Kevin's. Okay. We worked her in the squeeze chute right here. Marissa and I did. And what I did was I tried to pull out as much as possible. And this is the first time I've done this. I pulled out anything that I could reach. And this is, it was very graphic. That's why I just went ahead and cut it off for you because you didn't need to be a part of this situation. It was, it was, uh, it was rough. Let's just say that. And the smells were terrible. Obviously that's why I was gagging. So, um, I didn't feel like that everybody needed to see that. So what, uh, what happened was, is I reached in and got as much as I could. What I got out of this cow was, um, I got two legs. I'm pretty sure the calf was breached. Uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, basically when that calf goes through that cavity, when, when it's born, uh, it should go nose and two feet first, right? Nozzle, two feet, come out that way. Just by feeling inside of her, just by what I went through uh, in this situation when we had her in the squeeze chute, uh, I, I didn't feel that. I felt, um, I, I'm not gonna really go into detail in describing it. It was just not good conditions. Inside um, of the birthing cavity, but basically, I ended up pulling out two legs. I felt a, a spine, and I pulled out parts of the spine, and it kept breaking off, and so I had to stop. Um, but I got as much as I could, um, but I'm pretty sure the calf was backwards is, is what I was feeling, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. We, st we did it for about an hour, and I'll just say this. That cow knows something's wrong with her. She knew something was wrong. She was the first one to come up to me in that pasture um, with the big Joe herd. She was very, very good and very still in that squeeze chute. I mean, she barely moved at all. She knew that we were trying to help her and um, it's weird how things work out like that. She was so good for us. She's sitting that squeeze chute and I mean, probably 45 minutes I worked on her and tried to do what I could. Uh, we did have to give her some antibiotics to try to um, save her. That's what we're trying to do at this point. So far, she's doing good. Kevin uh, is gonna get some more um, stuff. I think it's called bolus. I'm not sure. I'll have to let you know what Kevin's gonna get for her. We're gonna run him back through the squeeze chute and give her some stuff that hopefully causes her to pass uh, this calf. But basically, I'll just tell you this, guys. Doc said there's a good chance she's not gonna, she's not gonna make it. One, she's gonna stress out in the squeeze chute. And if she goes down, she lays down, more than likely, she's gonna die and so she laid down a couple times and the third time i was like that's enough we're done i can't do anymore she's in a lot of pain she's stressed out because these these animals get very stressed out and so what happened is uh, after she did that we let her go and so what we're doing now is we're feeding her and we are we're trying to get her some some weight gain keeping her body flushed um, and then we did give her those antibiotics to try to help her immune system and fight the infection that's going on inside of her. But basically right now, it's a miracle that she's still alive. And uh, I didn't think she would um, still be alive the next day. So far, she's doing really good. She's hanging out with Eleanor's bull. Got good company right here. And uh, he's about to leave here pretty soon. But um, so got good company uh, with her. But guys, yeah, so far she's still alive. And that's uh, that's kind of a... A crazy a crazy deal I can't believe it and um, she's holding on strong I don't know how much she'll last she's lost some weight she was a huge cow she was one of the biggest cows I had almost 1200 pounds and uh, you know she was carrying a calf so you're adding a little bit more weight there but she was doing so good and it was gonna be her first time to calf in our hands and at the Ponderosa and unfortunately that didn't happen so I don't know why these things are happening to Bell Star and this Texas cow. Um, definitely makes you investigate, makes you question things. It makes you look into stuff. And I know this is life and it happens. Um, and, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll look at all those options and we'll talk to Doc about um, what caused those problems and why he's, why we've lost two calves this year. I've never lost a calf. And then all of a sudden, this year um i know that when you have livestock and we've been through this and i've had this conversation with you guys 
when you have livestock, you essentially are going to have dead stock. And I, I know that's a that's a thing, right? When you raise animals, that's part of life. And, uh, you know, we had a special day. Those roosters. We had a special day that day where Bell Star lost her calf. And then an hour later, I witnessed um, a live birthing, which I've never seen before. So, you know, kind of had a wild time there. And then a couple weeks later, after Bell Star's incident, we have this Texas cow that um, has a dead calf inside of her. It's terrible, but guys, so far she's still alive. And um, we're going to keep an eye on her, obviously get her some feed, um, good company here so she's not stressed out. And she's been behaving so well since we brought her here. Guys, that's the story um, with uh, our Texas cow. And uh, guys, we'll keep you updated with her. And uh, sorry for rambling on. Just try to tell you the whole story and try to tell you everything that went on uh, with this Texas mama. So if, it, if any of you have ever been through this with cattle or my bison people on here, you guys let me know what you did to try to help or try to uh, save the cow. And, and, you know, anything that you can do to help, you guys please let us know uh, as far as cattle go or dairy cows. Some treatments that you did to try to save uh, the cow. And uh, I know there's still a chance that she may not make it, but we're gonna do everything we can to try to save this mama, so. Thank you Fishing Clash for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget, you can go download the game using a link in our description or the QR code to use the special gift code BISON. Fucking fire ant. Seriously? Oh, you're in them. Ah! You're in them. They're gonna be in your boot. Don't go out there. They're gonna be in your boot, babe. They're still falling on you. Come on. Where are they? You need to get in here and take your boots off. They're gonna be inside your boots. Take them off. Jeez, girl. <laughs>